Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. We got the F- F- <laughs> SEC and FTX news, the big short in crypto. Investor warning on SEC regulations that are coming. Could Bitcoin see an EU ban? We're going to talk about this. We got David Schwartz in the news talking about chiming in on the flare airdrop, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to want every bit of that. And Digital Currency Group and Genesis going at it on social media over $1.6 billion in an open letter. Oh, my goodness. It keeps going. XRP, technical analysis. It's a red line. Are we going to see 18 cents or 17 bucks? Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content. $840 billion market cap for crypto. It's up 1.4%. Bitcoin now 16,700 plus. Ethereum 1,200 plus. We see Tether market cap at 66.2 billion, they say. XRP is 34 cents. Good morning, everybody. If you don't know about this, Obviously, Uphold is a great exchange. I love it. Been on there for years. Was a customer before they were a sponsor. But let me tell you this much. It's the home of the altcoins. And why it's different? Because you can do anything to anything on the platform. And guess what one of those anythings actually are? It is the ability to stake. And they just got it for HBAR, baby, FET and T-Token. I tell you what, click the link underneath and check it out for yourself. Over, I think it's 30 assets now that you can stake. Make sure you check that out. John Deaton says, remember when Brian Armstrong couldn't get a meeting with the SEC? This is a reminder here that the chairman of the US SEC, Goldman Gensler, met with SBF twice in six months. And... They were also awarded a broker-dealer's license. The big short institutional investors are betting against Tether. Say it isn't so. How long have we been talking about this on this channel? We've been talking about this so long on this channel, I forgot how long it is. I told you, regulators and governments, and especially the private central bank, the Federal Reserve, has only one product that they sell, and it's a U.S. dollar. I don't know what comes of all of this, but I tell you this, I'm not so sure that this illustration isn't right spot on. And think about what that would do to the market and crypto to go along with the SEC suing some U.S. crypto exchanges at the same time. And a warning falls right in line with the conversation we're having from investor Robert Kiyosaki, who warns the SEC regula regulations will crush most cryptocurrencies. And I'm here to tell you, that's the plan. That is the plan. Shout out to Cowboy Crypto here, who gives us this clip as a reminder from some time ago here, 2018, I believe tell it me was, here, then, you know, where Brad Garlinghouse said he believed 99% of cryptos will go to zero. Take a listen. Uh, does they can solve a problem they can deliver a customer need i have said publicly before that i think 99 percent of all crypto probably goes to zero but there is that one percent where i think that is focused on solving a real problem for real customers and is able to do that at scale and that's going to be game changing and i think that's it is going to be game changing and shout out to brad garlinghouse that was from back in 2019 but look where we are today and how spot on that feels I do believe that that is exactly what we're going to see. Look, there's over 20,000 cryptocurrencies. I think we can all at least agree, no matter where you sit in this space, there isn't 20,000 problems to solve. Now Bitcoin staring down the barrel of an European Union ban again. That's still back on the horizon, I tell you. Now, you know, Patrick Hansen, who follows this very closely, says that this is not true. Time to leave these breaking news accounts behind us, he says. And we'll keep an eye on it because Patrick Hansen really is on top of everything that's been going on with crypto in the EU parliament and the European Union and all of the regulation there. So kind of a mixed bag on that conversation we will follow it closely however we see that people are saying that there is a bitcoin artificial last gasp 
pointing out what here happened on Binance. Remember that the European Central Bank said Bitcoin was going to have a last gasp before it embarks on a road to irrelevance. I do remember that myself. We will see. We will see. We don't know as of yet, and I don't want anyone to get burned or lose money. However, we do know that it is not seen the way other assets are seen in the space. It is a threat to central banks because of Bitcoin's original agenda to be money and to be anti-bank, anti-establishment. Now, the libertarian in me loves the idea, right? But, you know, I know that central banks and governments don't. So we'll see who wins this battle before it's all over with. Right here, Ripple CTO David Schwartz says that he believes that the sluggish performance of XRP and other major cryptocurrencies is a result of uncertainty as to whether or not crypto will actually be the next big thing. And it elaborates a little on the article, but we don't need to get into it. But it really does say that. But speaking of the next big thing, here's a poll here from British Miss on Flare. And it says, if you sell your initial 15% of Flare, you lose the remaining 85% if voted through. So are you? And I put unknown because there are still factors that I want to learn when we get closer to where all of this goes. So we'll see. I'm neutral to all of this, and I am cautiously watching it all. However, David Schwartz pops in here and says, you want to sell before everyone else does. When you build in events that people want to wait for to sell, it creates the reverse incentive to sell before that event. If you want to wait until you get your 85%, you lose your chance to sell before everyone else waiting to get their 85% sells. That's a lot of downward pressure or downward price pressure that would become built in and thus a lot of incentive to sell before the pressure materializes. Creating artificial incentives to make people hold an asset that they don't want to hold for fundamental reasons is really bad. I say this from over a decade of painful experience with attempts at lockups and other incentives to hold. They backfire, always. They don't help in the long term because they expire. And they don't help in the short term because everyone knows they're going to expire and tries to beat everyone else trying to beat the expiration. They discourage long-term holding because you know the releases are coming. But as I discovered last time I tried to explain this, nobody seems to want to hear the truth about this and wants to believe that somehow incentivizing people to hold an asset that they don't actually want will magically make it more valuable. You know, David probably won't catch the hell that I have, and I know that I think, believe it was DAI is caught, um, but this is an original thought that I had way back in the day. Just give it all out. Do the 100% airdrop. Let the market shake out to where it is. People are going to buy and sell it for what it is, and then it will be what it is. Just get rip the Band-Aid off, right? That's what I hear. I don't want to put words in David's mouth, but that's exactly what I'm hearing here. We shall see how this goes. One thing I do want to remark is I am cautiously optimistic about Flare. But, you know, at the same time, I don't want to see anybody lose money. I want to see the platform do or the network do well. But we don't know. But David, I believe, brings up some good points that I know I was attacked for a long time ago. We'll see what happens here. Cameron Winklevoss, you're going to want all of this. An open letter to Barry Silbert. This here, I tell you, the egg fight takes to the streets, ladies and gentlemen. It's on social media. Barry, today marks 47 days since Genesis halted withdrawals. It says, I'm writing on behalf of more than 340,000 earned users who are looking for answers. These users aren't just numbers on a spreadsheet. They're real people. A single mom who lent her son education money to you. A father who lent his son's bar mitzvah money to you. A husband and wife who lent their life savings to you. A school teacher who lent his children's college funds to you. A policeman. So, so many more. Altogether, these people entrusted more than $900 million of their assets to you. They deserve concrete answers and, they, and we're here to get them. For the past six weeks, 
We have done nothing, done everything we can to engage with you in good faith and collaborative manner in order to reach a consensual resolution for you to pay back the $900 million that you owe. While helping you preserve your business, we appreciate that there are startup costs and any reconstruction or restructuring, and at times things don't go as fast as we'd all like. However, it is now becoming clear that you have been engaging in bad faith stall tactics. For example... On December 2nd, we expressed our belief that getting everyone in a room together as possible will, as soon as possible will be the most productive path towards uh, reaching a resolution. You agreed, but stated you would only do so after there was a proposal on the table. On December 17th, the proposal was delivered to you. On December 25th, Christmas Day, an updated version of this proposal was delivered to you. Despite this, you con continue to uh, refuse to get into a room with us to hash out a resolution. In addition, you continue to refuse to agree to a timeline with key milestones. Every time we ask you for tangible engagement, you hide behind lawyers, investment bankers, and process. After six weeks, your behavior is not only completely unacceptable, it is unconscionable. Uh-oh. And some more words that rhyme with gymnasium. The idea in your head that you are you that you can quietly hide in your ivory tower and that it will just all magically go away or that someone else's problem, pure fantasy. To be clear, this mess is entirely of your own making. DCG, of which you are the founder and CEO, owes Genesis its wholly owned subsidiary $1.675 billion. This money is Genesis owes to earn users and other creditors. You took this money, the money of school teachers, to fuel to greedy share uh, buybacks. It says illiquid venture investments and kamikaze grayscale nav trades that balloon the fee generating AUM assets under management of your trust all of the expense of creditors and all of your own personal gain. It is now time for you to take responsibility for this and do the right thing. It is not lost on us that you started your career as a bankruptcy restructuring associate. And it's not lost on us that you've been working desperately to try to f and firewall DCG from problems that you created at Genesis. You should dispense with the fiction because we all know what, what you know, that DCG and Genesis are beyond commingled. Everyone takes orders from you and always has. And anything you have done after that fact to pretend otherwise won't hold up. If instead you had put all this energy towards finding a resolution, we would have been done by now. Everyone would be in a better place, including you. It says here, earned users are tired. They're scared. Many now are in dire straits. And yet, despite all that they have done to endure, they have been remarkably patient and supportive. But there is only so much more they can take. They deserve a resolution for recovery of the assets they lent to you and in the end to the, and an end to this nightmare. To that end, and for the final time, we are asking you to publicly commit to working together to solve this problem by January 8th, 2023, just six days from now. We remain ready and willing to work with you, but time is running out. But then Barry Silbert responds to the thread. He says, DCG did not borrow $1.675 billion from Genesis. DCG has never missed an interest payment to Genesis and is current on all loans outstanding. Next loan maturity is May 2023. DCG delivered to Genesis and your advisors a proposal on December 29th and has yet has not received any response. He says, there you, Chairman Winklevoss says, there you go again. Stop trying to pretend that you and DCG are innocent bystanders and had nothing to do with creating this mess. It's completely disingenuous. How does DCG owe Genesis 1.675 if it didn't borrow the money? Oh, right. That promissory note. <laughs> will you or will you not commit to solving this by January 8th in the manner that treats the 1.1 billion promissory note as 1.1 billion. Uh, let me tell you something. There's an old adage. Desperation is a stinky cologne. And this is stinking. Keep your eyes peeled, ladies and gentlemen. Real people involved here. Not a joke. Blockchain backer, happy new year to him. I do believe that that was the bottom for XRP when he's talking about that 10% dip that we all saw. Of course, I didn't. I had to have Greg tell me about it, but shout out to Greg for that. I missed it. But there it is, and he believes that could be the bottom end for XRP, and I hope he's right. 
love to see the market turn around for XRP. But if it doesn't, this is what we should be paying attention to, ladies and gentlemen. He says, uh, Eggrag Crypto says to us, and shout out Happy New Year to him. It is obvious that XRP has tapped into the uh, 0.30 cent uh, four times since June lows. Usually the more you tap the support or resistance, the higher the probability to break it. It says, however, the bulls are stepping in to defend the red line, which you can see right here. We have to watch it closely. And if it doesn't break the red line, we could be looking at the low end of 18 cents, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, if you can look at the high line, that's 17 bucks, right? But if we want the 17 bucks, we got to have the tummy to be able to stomach the 18 cents. It's not one-sided, ladies and gentlemen. This is a high-risk environment. And if you don't have an appetite for it, you better reassess your portfolio and what you're doing and where you're at. Make sure you're comfortable. Not financial advice for me or anyone else. It's my digital perspectives. Before I get out of here, it's tax time. Coin Tracker. Get the app. Be able to track all, hook your exchanges to it safely. Track your assets, download it, be able to do your own taxes or send it to your accountant and have it all be in there. Not miss a transaction. Know that you're covered. Everything's reported properly. Keep the IRS where they should be in their office. That's going to do it for me. Hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Share with somebody you know. I'll catch all of you on the next one.